Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, because today we have uh, people from different countries around the world. So it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure you are here with us. Uh, today we are making a webinar about natural ingredients for cosmetics industry. We are talking about natural ingredients from Colombia. So my name is Catalina Gutierrez. I'm going to be today your host. I am part of the Bioentropic teams. And this webinar is organized by Global Cosmetic Clusters and Bioentropic. So welcome everyone. Uh, we are going to record this webinar. And at this moment, I am going to say hello to Segolen. Segolen Lilot is the coordinator of the Global Cosmetics Cluster. Segolen, hello. Uh, hello, Katarina. Uh, it's uh, Justine. Uh, from oh, hello, Justine. Yes, yes, Segolen, uh, Segolen is not here, but uh, she will uh, join us uh, in a few minutes. But I I'm going to present Global Cosmetic Cluster. OK, so let me i share the the slide please okay justin okay so uh, hello everyone, so I'm Justine Negon from Cosmetic Valley um, and I'm going to, to give you some uh, some words regarding uh, global cosmetic cluster. Next slide, please. Tell me one minute. Uh, Global Cosmetic Clusters uh, is the, the first international uh, network, uh, network of cosmetic clusters uh, dedicated to the innovation in cosmetics. So this international network uh, gather um, 17 cluster, uh, 19 clusters from 17 uh, countries from all around the world, uh, as you can see uh, uh, on the map. Um, the, the goal of, uh, of this network is to, to, to represent the, 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 the cosmetic industry, uh, to be a gateway to SME internationalization because um, we, we provide some action uh, to, to facilitate the collaboration uh, between uh, uh, cosmetic actors uh, at international level. Uh, and uh, the goal of this network is also to, to develop the, the interclustering collaboration, so collaboration between uh, between clusters, uh, in order to, to share good practices, uh, to to organize uh, events uh, at the benefit uh, of the of SMEs. Uh, so it was a, an overview uh, uh, of our action and uh, and the network. So I give the word to to Catalina to. Okay, so thank you, Justin. Where are you now? Um, I'm in France. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So thank you, Justin. I um, mean, she was talking about the Global Cosmetics Cluster. As I said before, uh, this webinar is organized by Global Cosmetic Cluster and Bioentropic. So at this moment, I'm going to say good morning. Hello, Claudia Marcela Betancourt. Uh, she is the executive director of Bioentropic. And as well, she wants to, to say some welcoming words and tell you about Bioentropic. Go ahead, Claudia. Hello, Catalina. Hello, everyone. And hello, Justin. <laughs> OK, I, I wanted to do something about Bioentropic because I want to let you know that Bioentropic is located in Colombia. We are an innovation center uh, promoting and supporting bio-based projects, um, companies, and also um, bio-business acceleration. We have more uh, different um, services like strategic intelligence studies, bio-business acceleration, collaborative innovative projects, and spreading knowledge. So since um, 2014, Bioentropic has been working. This the next slide, Catalina. Since 2014, Bioentropic has been working with more than 500 companies and business 
who are interested in bioproducts and service innovative to biodiversity and biotechnology. And also, we have been working together with more than three, uh, 13 ecosystem allies. Some of them are uh, cosmetic valid and the global cosmetic cluster. So we have experience in projects, experience in intelligent study. Also, this is because we are interested to promote biodiversity from Colombia to the, the world of beauty. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Okay, so let's begin. The webinar, Colombian Natural Ingredients and Related Regulation for cosmetic, Cosmetics Industry. So this is the general agenda. So we are going to, to know about a short view of Colombia, making business in Colombia, bio businesses, opportunities for cosmetics ingredients companies, key aspects, and at the end of this webinar, we will have the, the Q and A sessions, I mean, question and answer sessions. Okay, so please write your questions on the chat. So let's begin with Herman Rios. Uh, he's a senior investment advisor of ProColombia, uh, who is going to talk about a short view and making business in Colombia. Go ahead, Herman. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to everyone. Thank you so much, Catalina, Claudia, and Justine to, to, to let me, to, to invite me to be part of this uh, event today. My name is Herman Rios, as um, Catalina mentioned before, I'm Senior Investment Advisor at ProColombia. ProColombia is an investment promotion agency from the national government. And we want, what we want is that foreign companies invest here in our country. So the first, uh, so in order to, to start, I'd like to share with you a short video about Colombia. And after the video, I will show you a, a short presentation about making business in, in Colombia and business, uh, business friendly <laughs> environment that, that we have to, for foreign companies. So let's. Welcome to Colombia. We have been waiting for you. <laughs> We've developed a special roadmap to help you get acquainted with our country and feel comfortable investing with us. Colombia is the second most biodiverse country in the world, and this natural environment provides us with millions of hectares for agricultural production and ample supply of raw materials used in all industries by skilled Colombian workers. Thanks to its geographical location, sharing borders with two oceans and great passenger and cargo air connectivity, Colombia offers a great advantage as an export platform to supply the world. And it has also become an ideal nearshoring destination for international companies that are diversifying their regional supply chains. Colombia also shows one of the highest economic growth rates in the region and it is expected to continue growing through the infrastructure master plan focused on technical social and environmental sustainability the country welcomes international investors by offering various facilitating factors colombia's unique talented and highly skilled workforce is one of the largest in the region colombia offers strategic support in all stages of the investment cycle through its red carpet treatment for investors. There are special incentives for mega investments and a special free zone regimen. And as part of the commitment to being increasingly sustainable and competitive, the country offers special tax benefits for companies that generate a positive social and environmental impact. Colombia is a great option for your next investment. So are you looking for the right time to invest? Colombia has created an environment of excellence and our highly talented people will help take your business to the next level. The opportunity, the choice is yours. And the place, it's definitely Colombia. So 
So now what I would like to show you is this uh, short presentation that, that I have for you. Let me give me one second. I share as a presentation. Perfect. So I'm going to present you five reasons to invest in Colombia and why to invest in, in, in our country is a very good, um, one of the most important um, gateway here in Latin America to reach not only the local market, but also the regional market. So one of the five reasons to invest in the most welcoming country in the world, the first one is that we have a dynamic domestic market. The second, a regional hub and a competitive export platform. The third one, key conditions and safe and friendly environment for foreign direct investment. The fourth, leadership and commitment to sustainable economy. Pardon. And the fifth, um, how, how to, how, how to uh, the, the, the way to do business here in our, in our country. So the first one is Colombia has a dynamic domestic market and it's regions that uh, Colombia has different regions that provides um, different investment opportunities for foreign uh, companies. Colombia is the fourth largest economy in the region with a positive economic growth outlook. As you saw in the video, Colombia was forecasting that uh, it, will grew, it will grow by 4.5%, uh, but currently the OECD, IMF, and World Bank, uh, they forecast that Colombia will grow uh, at 6.1% or 5.4%. So this is a very important key factor for foreigners that Colombia has a very positive outlook. And if you look at it and you compare with other countries in the region, in Latin America, Colombia will grow at a faster rate than Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, and some other uh, countries around uh, the Latin American market. The country has an attractive domestic market. We, we have the third most populous country in Latin America, plus 51 million inhabitants, the, 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 the last uh, data. Uh, we have a young population that drives the domestic market. And also we have a different cities. Colombia is, a, in, in the next slide, I will show you about more the regions in Colombia, but we have 50, over 15 cities with more than 5,000 inhabitants and over and 27 cities over 2,500 uh, inhabitants. So also this provides uh, for foreign companies, uh, uh, multiple um, cities where they can locate it or set up their business and to reach this local market. And also, as I mentioned before, to uh, meet the, the, the regional market. As I was mentioned before, maybe for some of you, this is the first time that, that you've heard or you've seen Colombia. Uh, we have a different regions and multiple regions that provides a, a wide variety of sectoral vocations. So uh, uh, there are the Caribbean region, the north side of the, of, of the, of the this slide that, that, that you're seeing. Also, we have the Antioquia and the coffee region, Antioquia region, the capital is Medellin. We have the Pacific region where uh, is located the Buenaventura port, seaport. And we have also Amazon and Orinoco region where we have the most diverse uh, um, the, the most diverse things in, 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 in Colombia. And also we have Bogota and Cundinamarca. Bogota is the capital of Colombia. And we have the Center East that also is one of the most productive region of Colombia and it stands out as uh, for agribusiness, chemical, tourism, infrastructure, and some other uh, sectors. So also as you saw in the video, Colombia is the second most uh, biodiverse uh, country in the world. So this allows the foreign companies and especially for example, in the cosmetic industry, that some companies set up their business in our country. Some of them, for example, L'Oreal, they, they have their production facilities in our country. And also they are currently uh, applying for different um, R&D projects in, in, in our country. The second reason, Colombia is a regional hub and a competitive X platform. Uh, we have over 3,500 uh, maritime export routes that reach over 400 cities in the world. And also we have more than 2,400 export routes throughout a different uh, throughout freight, uh, air freight. Also, 
these provide us the, the ability to, to reach the, region, the, the local market and the regional market in a very rapidly way. Um, also, the connections is very important for foreign companies. Colombia is becoming, uh, in, the, in the last years, is, is becoming a very strategic point uh, to, to become the hub in the Americas. As if you look at uh, in this chart, Colombia from Bogota, you can reach Toronto in six hours, Santiago de Chile in less than six hours. Miami is three hours from, from here from Colombia throughout, airplane, throughout, throughout airlines. So we have this other, uh, these benefits that you can reach the, the, the regional market in a very rapidly way. That's the reason why some foreign companies set up their, their regional hubs here in Colombia. Sanofi, which is a, a French pharmaceutical company, they have their, their regional headquarters based in uh, Bogota. Also, this is very important for, for foreign companies. We have multiple uh, free trade zones. Uh, free trade zones are uh, areas that have preferential tax benefits for foreign or local companies. So this is a very important tool that I'm not going to get into the detail due to the, the time, but we can share you more information if you would like to know about the free trade zone. The, the important thing here is that within a free trade zone in Colombia, you can reach 100% of local market or you can reach 100% of export market. You don't have uh, um, a specific rate to export or a specific rate to, to reach the local market. So you have the ability to, to export, uh, to, if you would like to export 100% of your production or if you would like to to meet the local market 100% from a free trade zone. And we have different free trade zones in Colombia. We have in Bolivar, Atlantico and Magdalena, you see in the chart in the North area of Colombia. Also we have in Valle del Cauca, which is very nearby to, to, to the um, Buenaventura port, uh, seaport. And also we have uh, in, in Bogota uh, and Cundinamarca and also the El Dorado Airport is one of the largest airport, air cargo airport in, in Latin America. The third reason is that we offer key condition and friendly business environment for foreign companies. Colombia uh, has uh, equal treatment for foreigners and locals. So any foreign company that would like to set up their business here in Colombia will treat equally to as a national company in our country. So you can invest at any moment or, or withdraw your uh, your capitals or your um, dividends to your country as uh, without any inconvenience. Maybe as you might heard, and maybe Justine that she's based in France, currently Colombia in, in this year, we enacted a um, double taxation agreement with, uh, the, with uh, France. So also French companies and not also French companies, but also European and North American companies can take advantage of Colombia. Um, also, one of the things that, 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 I, that you saw in the video is that the free trade agreement that, that we have with, with Colombia that allowed us to, to reach more than 1.5 billion consumers around the world. We have 17 free tra uh, trade agreements in force with European Union, Korea, Israel, also with Chile, uh, United States. The, oh, it's very important for you that the current free trade agreement that we have with United States is considered by some uh, by the international or the investors as one of the most advanced um, um, free trade agreement. Uh, we have the, the best conditions to reach this market if you compare the free trade agreement between Colombia and the United States with other countries in the region. As I was mentioned before, we have uh, 13 double taxation agreements. Also, this is a very important tool for foreign companies to reach Colombian uh, and that uh, Colombia could be this gateway to uh, meet the regional market. Also, the national government offers an attractive incentive policies. Vallejo plan, which is an, uh, an, uh, an investment uh, that goes to, or what look for is that companies export more from Colombia. This could apply outside the free trade zone. Also acquisition of real fixed access. So for example, companies that set up their business in Colombia can, uh, if they buy a, a machinery to, to produce, for example, your cosmetics or your uh, R&D um, laboratory, 
uh, this uh, this equipment uh, will you can deduct uh, the VAT. Currently, the VAT in Colombia is 19%, so you can deduct this VAT, and it's a very uh, important tool. Also, we have research, science, and technology. We were very hand in hand with the Ministry of Science and Technology. So this is also very important uh, incentive that foreign companies that would like to set up or, or develop R&D process in Colombia could apply for. And some other that, uh, that, that I could show you um, in, in the next step. The four reasons is the leadership and commitment to sustainable economy. Colombia is betting very heavily to, to the sustainable economy. We have a, a commitment to green transition and a strategy to road to zero, as you might see in this chart. Although Colombia represents around 0.4% of global emissions, we have an, a very ambitious agenda in Latin America and the Caribbean to, 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 to meet this uh, green transition. We commit, Colombia committed to 51% uh, reduction in emissions by 2030, reach net zero deforestation by 2030, and achieve carbon neutrality by 2015. And Colombia is the first country in the region to, to, to publish an, a green taxonomy that uh, allows or that, that will allow to, uh, to, to develop a sustainable uh, road um, and support a business uh, more sustainable here in our country. So this is very important. As I mentioned before, Colombia is betting very heavily to become a very sustainable country in the region. We are a leader in energy transition. Colombia is a leader in energy transition, ranked third in the Americas and 29th among uh, the country, the, the world, sorry. And you can see the government challenge at the beginning of this government with uh, the, the installed capacity in non-conventional energy, as you saw in the video, was like around 400 megawatts. Currently uh, is 2,500 megawatts. So we have been growing our, uh, our um, energy ma matrix. And Colombia has the potential to be one of the cleanest energy matrix in, uh, in the region. And the fifth reason, the, we offer an attractive investment opportunities. Colombia is an ideal production center, not only for manufacturing, but also for develop an R&D process. Thanks to the competitive cost of human talent, supply, distribution, Colombia offers attractive um, uh, elements for foreign companies to set up their business in Colombia and also to, to manufacturing and production to, to meet uh, this, uh, your, your gateway here in, in Latin America from Colombia. Um, and some of the opportunities, packaging in automotive industry, also in the cosmetic industry, as I mentioned before, L'Oreal is based here in Colombia, I have their production here in our country. And the last uh, slide that I would like to show you is that Colombia has a regional operation center. As you saw, Colombia has this uh, logistic and distribution center, and uh, we have very competitive salary costs and convenient time zones uh, to reach the Americas. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for, 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 for letting me to introduce in a very rapidly way your, uh, the, the reasons to invest in Colombia. If any of the companies or any of the audience that is uh, currently here would like to address more information, I will share this presentation with Bioentropic and also with Cosmetic Cluster. So you can reach me um, uh, at any time and we can provide you further information. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Herman Rios from ProColombia. So we are going to continue. Welcome to everybody because uh, we know that some of you just arrived one minute before. Uh, so welcome to this Colombian webinar. Uh, today we we have other special guests. I mean, from Colombia, of course, but uh, we are going to have other special guests from the Environment Department of Colombia. Uh, Pro Colombia, as you saw, Swiss Contact, and four other natural ingredients companies uh, like uh, Ecoflora Cares, Bio Ingrid, Cajai, and Green Andina. So at this moment, I'm going to share again my screen. Okay. Okay, so let's continue with Claudia Betancourt, Executive Director of Bioentropic. 
talking about bio businesses opportunities in Colombia and biodiversity in Colombia. So, Claudia, are you there? Yeah, thank you, Catalina. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. Okay, again. let's talk about some opportunities for bio business in Colombia. The first one is that Colombia has a clear um, regulation related to biodiversity. We have those different topics like sustainable use of biodiversity, access of genetic resource, uh, biotechnology, bioeconomy, green growth, and others. In this slide, we can see some chronological days of this law, and these laws are important for us because it's that low support our new developed business. Okay, the second one that, the next slide. <laughs> okay, one <I> minute. <laughs> the second one that, that is that Colombia is the second most biodiverse country in the world. We have more than 50 happy species of flora and fauna and more than um, 270,000 tons per year of agricultural waste that are opportunity to develop for, for new products. Next. The third, we have capabilities. We have more than 600 R&D groups of biodiversity and biotechnology, yeah, and more than uh, 1,400 R&D groups on life science. And also, we have 300 innovative biotech companies. Next. So we have great opportunities to collaborate and develop sustainable value chain for on tropical biodiversity of Colombia. We can develop a new natural ingredients or bioactive ingredients from essential oil, vegetable oils, botanic extract, natural diet, and also we can contribute to develop um, natural cosmetic and, and there's more cosmetic. Next. So some examples. So we have natural ingredients all around the country. One of them are from Pacific, like eh, Agua, is Jennifer Americana, Achoti, we can develop from them natural dyes. And also we have another uh, species in the south of Colombia, in the Amazon region, like Buriti, Cajai, Sachainchi, Copasu, and so on, and we can develop vegetable oils. So we have one also we have DVD, Anamu, and, <laughs> and others native um, species from Colombia. So we invite you to collaborate with an innovative solution for Colombia. That's all. Thank you, Claudia. I'm going to ask Giovanni. Giovanni, it's better that you share the, the screen because for me, I mean, I am doing different kind of things at the same time. So, Giovanni, if you can uh, share this, it, it is better. So now we are going to introduce Claudia Sepulveda. Claudia is the coordinator of a program of Swiss Contact. The name of this of this program is Colombia Más Competitiva. I mean, a country more competitive. No sé si es solo la. I am doing just the translation like that. Claudia is going to to tell us in a better way about this one. Um, why is Claudia here? Why is Swiss Contact here? Okay, so Claudia, go ahead. Thank you, Catalina, and good morning, everyone uh, here in Colombia. Good afternoon and good uh, night uh, for the people who is joining us from overseas. Uh, and a special thank you to you, um, being Tropic, Claudia Tancur, and the Global Co Cosmetic Cluster, uh, which we have the short opportunity to meet in the last in cosmetics in, in Paris. Um, well, why am I here? <laughs> Because we are, we have been working with the with the sector in the last uh, six years. Uh, just to give you a, a very quick context of what we've done, we are Colombia Mass Competitiva. We are a program uh, funded by the Swiss government and uh, with the support of the Colombian government, and we work together to help the country to achieve a better competitive uh, position 
through uh, better policies, better public policies, and through the development of uh, four value chains uh, in the country. So one of the value chains that we support is the, um, is the um, natural ingredients uh, value chain. We work for four years with the cosmetics uh, based on natural ingredients. And we, we were trying to understand and, and, and learn from a, what is the, the competitive um, advantage of the competitive position of this chain in Colombia. So we supported four projects uh, during those uh, first uh, four years of the program. And we learned a lot uh, in, in, in how um, sophisticated this sector is. Uh, it's a sector that has um, very uh, high uh, standards in research, development, quality, and, uh, and all these um, regulations that the products have to meet in the, in the, in the market. So as far as the, our biodiversity is so big, as uh, Claudia mentioned, the numbers are, 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 are huge. Uh, we said, well, if Colombia wants to position itself as, as a country that has a, a competitive offer for the market, we need to focus on, on, on where we have uh, the most uh, uh, potential for, for, for this market. So we made a, a study, a study that uh, um, went to the, to the world of, cos of cosmetics and, and identified five markets that are very potential for our um, products. And then it came here and investigated on the offer that the country has. So we have um, sort of discovered that there are 29 species uh, where Colombia has a potential and a very competitive offer to go to the market, not only in cosmetics, but also in, in food and dietary supplements. Um, as you know, the natural ingredients are very um, uh, diverse. They can be used in the cosmetic industry, they can be used in, in the food industry, or in the health, in the health uh, industry. So we, we try to identify those uh, 29 species uh, where uh, Colombia has a, a, a some sort of advance in the development of products. Products. And um, uh, what we did that in the four uh, past years. And now, in this new phase that we are going to be uh, helping the country with this for the next four years, we open a call um, trying to capture uh, the best uh, projects that we are. Um, uh, developing in and helping them to to achieve their 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 market uh, their market um, entrance. So we receive uh, nearly fifty expressions of interest. All of them very interested, very interesting. All of them with a high component of research and development. Uh, we really were surprised of of the huge uh, potential that this industry has in Colombia. Unfortunately, we only called. Um, and finance four of them. So um, the resources were, in, were not enough to, to, to finance all, all of the 50 uh, expressions, of, uh, expressions of interest, but all of them very, very competitive. Some of them are going to be presented today because they, they came to our call. And um, uh, just to, to, to give you a, a, an insight of what we receive, we receive uh, and we selected four uh, projects. One of them is uh, EcoFlora. Uh, they're going to talk to to you today, so I'm not going to say too much about this. So um, this is a, a project that, that uh, has a very um, advanced uh, process in research and development and is very ready for, for the market and offers a very high quality product. Um, also with Sacha Inchi, we are helping a, a, a group that is um, spread through the country and they are developing the, the Sacha Inchi as an ingredient for, for uh, diverse uses in, in cosmetic industry and also in, in food industry. Uh, but it is very interesting because it has a lot of um, uh, impact on social uh, groups and, and this, uh, this um, ingredient is, is very dynamic and has a lot uh, to offer and a lot, a lot to develop uh, and to go to the market with, with a very high standard product. Uh, the other one is Casa Luker. Casa Luker is one of the biggest companies uh, that produces chocolate in the country. 
but they came to this uh, to this call with a very interesting proposal on how to use the um, waste from the cocoa um, uh, process itself uh, the the shield of the of the of the cocoa um, and also the the, the um, we say here the mieles, the, the water that comes from the process. So they are going to develop some very innovative products uh, from this uh, waste. We call it waste, but it's almost 40% of the whole fruit. So uh, we, we could say this is not waste. It's, it's something that is not um, um, uh, taking into advantage completely. So we, we are going to support that process. And the other one is Selva Nevada, which is a company that works with, um, with um, uh, fruits from the Amazon region that also Claudia mentioned some of them. And they are very innovative. They are trying to mix new flavors. They are in the food industry. They, they are specialized in ice creams, uh, but they, they develop very uh, interesting research um, processes to to um, to produce these um, these um, ice creams from from fruits in the in the amazon so all of them are different some of them go for the cosmetics industry some of them go for the uh, food industry but this give us um, a view of what the what the potentials of the sector are uh, how developed the industry is this is an industry that requires as i as i've told you before, uh, very long processes on, of research and development, high investments in, in time and in money. So we need, we have a lot, of, a lot to do there, a lot, a lot of potential to, to develop there. So we are going to be helping these four, um, these four uh, projects, but we are also going to help the, pro the, the, the country or the, or the sector to um, develop a, a, a a portfolio of potential uh, ingredients that are ready to go to the market. We are going to try to help them with ProColombia and the other actors that uh, participate in the in the roundtable of, of cosmetics um, to reach the market to go and, and have this um, first hand approach with potential uh, buyers and to understand what the what the requirements of the market are and how we can also from the regulatory processes uh, help them to 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 put in place all the uh, business environment so they can develop uh, more easily well that's that's about all i have to to tell you today and i hope that, the, that i have used the time wisely Thank you for having me. Thank you, Claudia. So I don't know, I, I was checking this chat and everyone is in silence. So I don't know if, if everything is clear to you or you don't have any question, we are here to answer those questions. Okay, so please write your questions on the chat if you have something uh, to clear. Okay, so now we are going to start with the four natural ingredients Colombian companies. And the first one is Ecoflora Cares. Adrián, Adrián Giraldo. Adrián Giraldo is the business development of this company. Adrián, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Catalina. I'm very good. How's everybody doing here? I hope everybody uh, is, I, is uh, yes, a good time. I hope every, everybody is good. Okay, so go ahead, Adrián. I share my screen now? You need to yes. stop sharing. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Adrián Giraldo. I am a business, a business development advisor for Ecoflora. Um, Ecoflora is a Colombian company uh, that was founded in 1998, and basically what Ecoflora tries try to do is uh, to leverage the, uh, the Colombian biodiversity to develop natural ingredients uh, for different kind of applications. Uh, we specialize in, in natural colors for the cosmetics, uh, personal care, and food uh, industries, and we are very careful uh, or very or try to promote the responsibility of the ingredients on the supply chain by including access uh, and benefit sharing uh, concepts into our products. Uh, we are compliant with Nagoya protocol and following that 
We were the first uh, company in Colombia that was a member of the UBT. We were even in the board of the Union for Ethical Biotrade. And that's basically what the, the way we, we try to, to take advantage in a sustainable and responsible way of Colombian biodiversity, which already, uh, which is the second biodiversity in the world. That's what, it's something that was already commented by ProColombia and also by Bioentropy. And what we do, uh, we develop natural color, as I mentioned before, and uh, we are currently uh, very active in the, in the food industry. And uh, we are trying to have more uh, presence in the cosmetics and personal care. We are located in Colombia, in Savaneta, in Antioquia. We have a manufacturing factory um, just outside Medellin, uh, and we mainly uh, are sourcing from rural communities in different areas of Colombia. This is something I'm going to explain a little bit later. As I mentioned before, we have different kind of ingredients. Uh, our main development and our main innovation is the Java Blue. Uh, we are also exporting uh, um, some uh, a natural wax for the cosmetics industry. And we, during our history, we have also produced um, essential oils and some oil resins. These are some like residual products, but our main focus right currently is on innovation. Um, and as I said before, uh, our core innovation is the Jagua Blue. The Jagua Blue, it's a, it's a natural blue color. Uh, it, this is really important for the food and, and cosmetics industry because um, the, the, basically the, the industry is trying to replace uh, everything for something which is, is natural, which is more sustainable, uh, given the, the, the bad promotion or the bad the, the, uh, develop, the bad performance that chemicals have in the, in, the, in, the, in the human health. So since everyone is trying to re replace nat chemicals for naturals, this also happens to colors. And natural colors are something that are really present in the, in the nature, but not blue. So just try to think about something is blue, that's blue. And which is not the ocean or the sky uh, and is present in nature and preferably in vegetable sources. So blue is really scarce. Um, so this fruit, this jagua fruit, it's, it happens to have a natural color inside them, inside it. So we develop a natural, we develop a process to extract the natural blue from this color, uh, uh, which is this big uh, molecule that you have here. Uh, and this natural color happens to be water soluble, temperature stable, uh, really, really concentrate, concentrated, which allows a low dosification. It's 100% safe, pH stable. And given that uh, we have protected it uh, through two families of international patents. So now uh, this natural color is uh, present in the market. It's uh, approved in Colombia for, for a natural, for a wide, a range of uses, and we are currently uh, expanding its use in the food industry and in the cosmetics industry, uh, in different kind of uh, uh, for different kind of applications in different uh, regions. Uh, the Hawa fruit comes from different places in the world. Not it's not only coming from Colombia. The Geneva Americana fruit, which is the Latin name of the fruit. Uh, comes from it, it's it, it can be found all over America so it can be found from the northern part of Mexico uh, through the northern part of Bolivia it has different kind of names around the, the region and it, it's also really used and and wide use for the indigenous communities in in the in the um, in the region uh, as an as temporary tattoo. So the, the main or the most known use is temporary tattoo, but uh, what we do is has nothing to do with the natural uh, capacity of the fruit for tattooing the people. Now, we what we do is taking away this staining property and we just take the blue color, which is uh, uh, soluble in water and, and provides a really natural and appealing uh, color to, to different kinds of formulations. As I mentioned before, we, we rely on different kinds of supply chains. We work in rural communities in Colombia, we work with indigenous communities, we work uh, with peasant communities, with Afro-descendant communities, and we also have projects for establishing forestry plantations to, to 
to guarantee the supply chain at, at the long term. So at, at the left side, you can see different kinds of applications in, in which we have been uh, introducing the species for regenerating a different kind of soil. So we have regenerated with this species uh, uh, forest, um, sorry, um, mining, degrading soils. We have established silvopastoral systems for having available the jaguar fruits uh, without taking away the 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 um, the cattle farming uh, vocation of different uh, uh, places, and also we have tried to establish agroforestry plantations to introduce the jaguar fruit as a as a different uh, way of income for local communities. Um, this is this is it. I I believe I I we believe there's a, a huge potential with the jaguar fruit and other. Uh, native and natural species in Colombia, trying to integrate this kind of new species into traditional uh, supply chains uh, to try to establish more uh, possibilities for the people in the regions and also for creating more uh, products that have high value that can be treated as scientific products, not only as uh, raw extract. So, here we are for you in case you have any 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 questions or in case you have any uh, possibilities for developing new businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. We love this project. We love this portfolio. We love Ecoflora Cares. I mean, this is part of who who we are in Colombia. Um, Adrian, at this moment there are no questions on the chat. Thank you uh, for your time. So we are to we are going to to continue with the webinar, Giovanni. Next, like thank you, Giovanni. So next company, Bio Ingrid, with Sebastian Lopez, Research and Development Coordinator of this company, Bio Ingrid. E Bio Ingrid, Sebastian, how are you today? Hello, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for the other people that it's around the world. Okay, so the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, I cannot share my screen. Okay, right. No, I can. Okay. <clears throat> can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, again. Hello everyone, it's a pleasure for me and for the whole Bioingred Tech team for being part of this webinar. And uh, remembering the, the, the other presentation at the beginning of this webinar, I think that we all have clear that Colombia is a big uh, opportunity for investing and developing uh, bio businesses. Uh, in our country. But uh, I would like to ask if you have ever wondered what could result from combining leading edge technology with our biodiversity. So in buying red tech, we have developed uh, ingredients that are made by nature, but proven and proven by science. Uh, here in buying red tech, we have uh, three, three principal uh, models for developing our ingredients. And those are uh, scientific knowledge, open and circular innovation and sustainability. We come from, uh, we are a spin-off uh, uh, from the University of Antioquia, one of the most important universities here in, in the country. And we come from a research group that has more or less 20 years in the academic fields of phytochemistry and functionalizing bioactive substances for cosmetic and functional foods purposes. Uh, regarding the open and circular innovation, uh, currently we have open projects with one of the biggest companies in, in Colombia that work with vegetal materials like Levapan, like Compañía Nacional de Chocolate, the chocolate 
national company. Uh, those are one of our clients and we have started a relationship with one of our new customers that is located in Italy, in Europe. And talking about the sustainability, for all of our ingredients, we try to get uh, directly to the farmer of, of uh, all of our materials. So we have a fair trade, fair trade culture when we try to always pay the best uh, for, for the farmer directly with not uh, intermediators. So uh, this uh, generation of assets for the development of, sorry, for the development of the of natural ingredients has led us to get a portfolio of at least 11 ingredients from natural resources from Colombia. In this case, we have developed two main lines uh, apply with applied science. Uh, those are biomotion and functional blends that I'm going to explain further. In this case, we have a wide portfolio that covers uh, a huge brand of, of necessities that cosmetic industry could have. For example, we have anti-aging ingredients, we have sun care ingredients, we have uh, brightening activities for, for, for some of them, we have tonifying and toning activities for skin, anti-pollution anti -pollution too, we have emollient and soothing uh, activity from some of those ingredients. We also have cleansing property, properties regarding the content of natural substances from these ingredients. We also have moisturizing, refreshing, and obviously hair care that's a really important uh, field for the cosmetic industry, mainly here in Colombia, that represent at least 80% of the cosmetic industry here in our country. We also have body uh, and hair uh, nutrition. All of our ingredients are made from the direct fresh fruit. So the content of bioactive substances and the content of nutrients or vitamins and different kind of uh, oligo elements, there are in a very important amount in our ingredients. So the application for nutrition purposes with, with them, it's really good. We also have antioxidant and detoxifying activities. We have tested uh, these claims with uh, international laboratory lo located in Spain. And we also have anti-inflammatory soothing and ingredients for sensitive skin. So what's the technology behind our ingredients? Uh, in the case of biomotion, we have applied the, the nanotechnology uh, for delivery systems uh, uh, purpose. So in this case, if you can see this graph, look that biomotion, it's an emulsion type ingredient. So you are going to have the fixed or essential oil of the ingredient emulsified or dispersed on the aqueous phase of the extract. So it's, it's like having avocado oil dispersed on avocado extract, for example. That, that is the case of biomotion avocado. Uh, we have developed uh, a methodology that is uh, part of our know-how that allow us to stabilize the, the pulp and the fruit directly with a minimum of processing and it is not going to, to unstabilize with, um, in, in the time. So we also have demonstrated that we have a pickering effect in our ingredients Pickering effect in colloidal uh, physical, chemi physical chemistry, uh, it's related with uh, amount of particles, a solid particle that contribute to the stabilization of the motion. So this led us uh, to use natural uh, ingredients to stabilize them. So we don't use uh, synthetic for most of our ingredients. We, we don't use synthetic su substances for them. I don't have anything uh, against synthetic chemistry. 
but that contributes to the naturalness of our ingredients. So for bioemulsion, we also have three main advantages. They are all in one, as I, as I told you, we make a whole fruit extract that, we, that led us to take out all the chemistry or all the composition of the different substances that are, are inside of the fruit. Uh, so you are going to see that our ingredients have multiple inky names. So you are going to see, for example, in the case of coffee, you are going to see coffee, arabica, fruit extract, fruit oil. You're going to see husk extract too. So uh, that's one of the advantages and for our some of our customers, that is a really important tip. Obviously, their naturalness is really important for us. We have, uh, we are not, we are, we have analyzed and calculated the natural indexes uh, based on the ISO 16128, and all of our ingredients comprise the natural origin index uh, uh, that it's demanded in, in this this regulatory uh, certification. And we also <clears throat> have an easy to incorporate advantage. As you know, cosmetic industry has a unitary operation that regards a lot of energy that you have to use, uh, a lot of processing, heating. And as you can see, our ingredients are pre-emulsified uh, fix it as, uh, an essential oils, so it's more easy to incorporate them in inside of <clears throat> inside of them. So that's biomulsion. In this case, we have biomulsion acai, we have biomulsion avocado, biomulsion coconut, biomulsion coffee cherry, biomulsion cocoa, and we also have biomulsion menthol and biomulsion CBD cannabinoid. But in this case. You can see that these ingredients, they are pointed with a mark. This is because they are not natural, uh, but we can uh, uh, direct the formulation of, of the ingredients to make a natural ingredient, but it is going to be a little bit expensive because uh, natural components are in some cases more expensive. And we also have a very important and beautiful family of ingredients that is functional blend. Functional blends is a really important family of ingredients that we have developed. And it's a mixture of different species that have a synergistic effect for a cosmetic purpose. So in this case, you are going to find fi uh, functional blend green tea, green coffee, and cocoa. That's one ingredient. You're going to find uh, bixa, achiote, and acai. Uh, in this case, it's an exotic mixture of different plants. And uh, we also have functional blend lulo, passion fruit, and golden berry. That it's a really exotic fruits here. They are really, they have a really important content of saponins that are a natural found uh, uh, substances that helps to detergency and to cleansing objectives. So for micellar waters or uh, cleansing gels, it's a really, really uh, good ingredient that you can use. And we also have the traditional mixture of calendula, chamomile, and aloe. It's a really traditional mixture, but it has demonstrated a really importance here in Colombia, at least, because a lot of cosmetic products use it. So that's... Uh, the two big families that we have in our portfolio in this moment, we have clinical testing for them, we have dermatological testing too, patch test, we have some, we won the last year uh, a contest uh, for, the, for a United Kingdom uh, investing for biobusinesses companies and we have, we were one of the three companies that won that prize and, they learned, and that led us to invest at least $50,000 just for clinical trials. So we have in vivo and in vitro demonstration of efficacy and safety for them. Obviously, this is a lot of information. I'm not going to focus on that. If you need a specific data sheet of one of these ingredients, you can write us down or contact Biotropic or uh, contact us directly at bioinfo.com. 
co by ingrid www.myingrid.co uh, and you can write us down what are your questions what regarding one of our ingredients so just for end uh, sustainability and origin is really important for us it's not it's not just saying we are the most biodiverse one of the most biodiverse country of the world we have to applicate knowledge to this development of ingredients and we are proud to say that we are one of the companies uh, sharing that place with the other companies that we in this moment have that it's a real that's really important for us and to invest to the colombian science and biodiversity we also have a co-creation program if you haven't seen one of the ingredients that you want in your project, you can contact us and we are going to develop for you, okay? So thanks for your time. That will be all. Thank you, Sebastian. Okay, next on this webinar, Camilo Jaramillo, co-founder and marketing and sales director of Cajai. Welcome, Camilo. Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon for those in, in Europe. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and have this opportunity to, to share what we're doing. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Mm, okay, can you see my screen? Yes, Camilo. Perfect. Okay, so our company is Cajai, and we are the first in the world to industrialize a new Amazon nut. Uh, so this means there is no other company in no other country doing what we're doing, which is that uh, we, this is a, a native uh, species from the Colombian Amazon and Orionokia region. It's an edible nut, quite tasty in, in fact, and very nutritious. And from this nut, uh, we cold press a precious oil for skin and hair care. Uh, we also develop other uh, natural ingredients from this nut, we, of course, we, we, we have the edible nuts to, to sell as, uh, as functional snacks. And, and also uh, we have a, a vegan protein, a plant-based protein, uh, which is the defatted grinding nut once we extract the oil. And we also uh, develop a, an exfoliant from the shell of this nut. So why is this so important? Uh, as you may know, um, nuts in the world, there are um, only 10 nuts, three nuts being commercialized. This is the 11th nut. Uh, so uh, we're developing a whole portfolio of natural cosmetics and uh, conscious nutrition uh, products where we sell not only the bulk ingredients, but also we have finished products. So all our portfolio is based on cacao, uh, so we have all premium sustainable cacao products. And um, this oil, uh, I don't know why it's not moving. Okay, so cacao oil had been used since ancient times by indigenous in the Amazon as an emollient for burns and irritation healing and to improve cicatrization processes. What we've done is we, we have brought this uh, tree into plantation and developed a process uh, that help us preserve all the regenerative and antioxidant properties of, of these nuts. Um, so as I mentioned, we sell it as a finished product, as an anti-aging face oil, but also as a bulk ingredient. And the main benefits is that it's a 100% natural anti-aging that prevents and combat the, the signs of aging. So the, the first you notice when using this oil is that it restores skin luminosity. It provides a long lasting hydration, improves elasticity and firmness, diminishes dark spots and reduces wrinkles. And all these uh, claims are supported by clinical studies that we run uh, in Germany, which I'm gonna come back to this. So uh, what makes cacao oil unique compared to any other oil in the industry is the dry touch. So it's very uh, um, uh, compatible with the skin lipids. So it's very light. It spreads easy and quickly absorbs into the skin and doesn't leave any oily or a sticky feel. Uh, that's why you can use it 100% pure in your face, in your hair, in your body, everywhere. 
So um, we sell the, the pure ingredient, 100%. We don't add any chemical fragrances, preservatives. Uh, and since it contains so much natural antioxidants, it's got a 36 months shelf life. Um, it's Cosmos and EcoCert uh, compliant, and it's also not true. So it's as, as pure as, uh, and as natural as a, as a product uh, can be. In fact, I'm gonna show you here a video of the extraction process. We use a German cutting edge technology for cold pressing oils. Uh, and as you can see, on we just pressing the nuts. On one side, we obtain the oil, and the remaining uh, is the, the 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 protein meal I mentioned is the departed grinded nut. Uh, so cacao oil is suitable for daytime use and during night, of course. It's uh, dermatologically tested and it's suitable for sensitive skin and also for oily skin. And it doesn't react with UVA light exposure. So it's totally safe to, to use during the day. And, and what makes it very unique is that it's rich in linoleic acid, vitamin E and retinol. In fact, it exceeds the best properties of some of the most precious oils in the cosmetic industry. Uh, so it contains 50% more vitamin E and twice the amount of linoleic acid than argan oil. And it contains three times more retinol than, than rosehip. In fact, we won a, uh, an innovation award in Paris in 2013 for the development of, of this oil. So linoleic acid, or some call it vitamin F, uh, essential fatty acids, uh, it's um, one of the main components of the skin protective layer uh, that's why 75% uh, of this oil is linoleic acid. That's why it's so compatible. And among the, the most important properties of, of linoleic acid is that it's a great cell regenerator. It's got anti-irritating and anti-inflammatory properties, and it's, it's a, a sebum regulator. So not, it works not only in dry skin, but also in oily skins. It improves the texture of, of oily skin. Um, uh, vitamin E is well known as, uh, as it's a great um, uh, for its antioxidant, antioxidant power. Uh, retinol is called the, the anti-aging vitamin as, as it promotes the production of collagen and elastin in the skin. And coming back to the uh, clinical test we developed in Germany, um, well, these tests usually take eight to 12 weeks, but in just four weeks, we had wrinkle reduction in 95% of the patients. And it was up to 45% reductions in, in wrinkles volume. And uh, so this was even higher than, um, than, um, than high-tech products with chemicals. And, and so, and this is just a, a natural extract. And not only did it reduce wrinkles, it also improved hydration firmness, elasticity, and, and smoothness. And these measurements were taken 12 hours after the last application to pre prevent measuring a cosmetic instant effect and rather measure how the skin was improving. This is a 3D image of a picture in the eye contour and you can see the, the colors give you the depth. You can see how this dark blue disappears in the image of the right, this green went away. So it regenerated the tissue, filling up the, the wrinkle. In, evidence of this uh, regeneration power we see it in this patient that had a skin cancer removed and by using the oil during six months it practically vanished the the scar same thing with this patient that had a, a, a burn with boiling water in her stomach and in just two months the recovery was uh, outstanding so there are many products in which you can include a cacao oil uh, I'm gonna pass this through uh, for luminosity purposes, nourishing purposes, uh, for uh, to provide long-lasting hydration, to smooth the surface of the skin, uh, to improve elasticity and firmness for dark spots, uh, uh, wrinkles and fine lines, and also as a cosmetic booster um, uh, or as a makeup primer. And in terms of, of uh, we already discussed about the, the oily skin, um, for aftershave uh, products is amazing. I have sensitive skin, I get a rash every morning. So uh, this suits my skin, reduces the redness and, and calms the itchiness. And for hair care products, 
as antifreeze to uh, it nourish the fibers, seals the split ends, provides a lot of shine and luminosity or, or silkiness to, to the hair. And it helps protect from the iron and the, and, and the, and the hair dryer. And for beer care purposes also is, is really good. It strengthens nails. Uh, it's good to prevent the stretch marks during pregnancy and totally safe to use uh, also in, in, in baby products as it's a, a food grade ingredient. So it's, uh, in fact, babies love it uh, after hair removal or to care for, for tattoos. This has, these are just some examples. So these are 100% not a Colombian product. Uh, Torrance is sustainable. In fact, we won a sustainability award in London in 2017 for the work we're doing with NGOs such as um, um, WWF, uh, GIC, the commercial cooperation agency from, from Germany, uh, Amazon conservation team, uh, with, we are, uh, with whom we are bringing these trees to Pesan and indigenous communities in faraway regions in Colombia as a reforestation alternative for illicit crops substitution uh, for food safety and also for economic uh, growth. So we're basically growing wellness and a new industry for, for Colombia, which is a, is, is, is a big source of innovation, not only for the cosmetic industry, but for the food and pharmaceutical industries. I don't know if there's any questions. There's no questions, Camille. <laughs> so I I guess everything is so clear. So thank you very much, Camilo. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to introduce now to Green and Dina. And we are going to have Angelica Sanchez who is the director of this company, and Javier O. Xavier Grau, administrative and production director. Good morning, Angelica and Javier. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are Green Andina, Colombia from Bogota. Okay, podemos ver tu pantalla. Good morning and good afternoon, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, we are Brigandina Colombia from Bogota. She is uh, Angelica Sanchez, the CEO of Brigandina, and my name is Javier Grau from the operations department. Brigandina uh, is a company established in, in Bogota. Uh, we are producers, manufacturers from uh, raw materials to the cosmetics industries. Uh, we use the the waste of the of many of many industries in in Colombia to produce uh, raw materials uh, for the different uh, cosmetics ingredients. Uh, we have a we have a, a, a facility a plant industry in Bogota, and we have to farms in the cold zone and in the warm zone of uh, Cundinamarca, uh, where we uh, produce the plants to obtain, for example, uh, essential oils, uh, produce uh, fruits to produce extracts. Uh, for example, we have in, the, in one of our farms, um, tea tree oil, we can reproduce the tea tree oil in, in the warm zone of Cundinamarca, in one of our, our farms. Uh, we produce uh, calendula flowers in our, in our farms uh, in, the, in the cool zone of Bogota. Uh, all of these products uh, are prepared in our plants in the natural uh, in the natural uh, processes. Uh, we have uh, many many products for for the industry. Next. 
as you see, we, we have uh, essential oils, we have uh, vegetable oils, we have a extraction plant in, in Bogota to get uh, sacha, to get uh, maracuja oil, uh, peach oil. So we have a, a, we are prepared to to produce all these products with technology, uh, with quality controls. Uh, we are in, in in many fairs in in, in USA and um, Europe, so we are prepared to to produce the the, the product. Next. We use the the, the green cycle. Uh, we use the waste of the Jewish industry, for example, to prepare uh, maracuja oil, maracuja exfoliants. We use the the kernel of the of the peach to produce exfoliant and to produce oil from the seeds. We use all the, uh, the the materials in the processes, and we um, uh, we contribute to the environment uh, and the change to use all the materials and have the 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 low the low impact in the in the environment. Okay. Here we have our lines, oils, uh, butters, um, essential oils, extracts, exfoliants, um, the next please. This is our team, our facilities in, in Bogota. And we are, uh, we we have a, a we are prepared to 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 get your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, Angelica. Uh, we don't have any questions, so just just to tell. Uh, to tell you that uh, we offer you the possibility of approaching Bioentropic in order to establish a direct contact with all these companies, okay? For that reason, we have shared on the chat our um, email details. Director, arroba, bioentropic.com and info arroba bioentropic.com. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ecoflora Cares, Bio Ingrid, Kahai, and Green Andina. And at this moment, I'm going to invite to this webinar, okay, to Natalia Casas, who is the coordinator of Genetical Resource Group of Ministry of Environment or Environment Department of Colombia and Esteban Neira, uh, who is another professional of this group. Good morning, Natalia. Good morning, Esteban. Muy buenos días, Catalina. Eh, como lo habíamos hablado, eh, mi compañero Esteban va a hacer la presentación de lo que es la regulación de acceso a recursos genéticos en Colombia. Para mí es un gusto estar en este espacio y le doy la, la palabra a Esteban. Ok, Esteban, I don't know if you would like to translate the, the welcoming words of Natalia and then to start your presentation. Ok, thank you very much, Catalina. Good morning to everyone. Uh, as Natalia mentioned, we are part of the Genetic Resources Group. She is our coordinator and she is very pleased to be here uh, with me to share with you some key aspects related to the provisions on access and beneficiary in Colombia for, for your easy understanding uh, and it, which is a very important thing in, in these matters of natural ingredients. So if you allow me, I will share my screen. Where are you, Esteban? Okay. 
Are you asking me what I am? Yes. Okay, I'm here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are negotiating the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. So it's also an honor for me to be here in representation oh, yeah. of Colombia's delegation. It's so interesting. Yeah, we are also negotiating a lot of things relating access and benefit sharing. So here we are. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So, uh, as I previously mentioned, I work at the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, which is the competent national authority of Colombia in matters of access and benefit sharing. I want to first mention that the provisions on access and benefit sharing uh, are not uh, country specific provisions. Our legislation around access is framed and has its origin in the provisions of the Convention on Biological Diversity, which was signed in 1994, and to which Colombia is a party, um, along together with other 192 countries. This uh, convention has a specific provisions that says that when someone wants to access to genetic resources, it has to do in, in specific conditions. And to, for the fulfillment of this obligation set in the convention, the Andean community countries, to the date Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, and Colombia, signed a common regime on access to genetic resources in 1996, which is commonly named as the Andean Decision 391. This, um, this Andean Decision set, sets out um, the basis for all the legal provisions of Colombia in matters of access and, and benefit sharing. And I'm, I want to highlight some, some of the few elements of the, of, of the national, national legislation. First, the Decree 730 of 1997 sets established that the unique competent national authority in Colombia for access to genetic resources, for, for, for granting access to genetic resources and its derivatives is the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development. That, that means that if you want to access to genetic resources of Colombian origin, the unique entity of the government that is authorized to and that can do that is the Ministry of Environment, which acts through the Genetic Resources Group, which I am representing here together with Natalia. The second one that I want to highlight is the resolution 1348 of 2014 that sets out the activities that constitute access to genetic resources and its derivatives in Colombia, to which I will get in more detail in, 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 in the next minutes. Then uh, we have the resolution 1352 of 2017 that uh, partially modifies the resolution 1348 regarding access and the regime uh, on industrial property. And finally, we have two uh, decrees that were uh, issued in 2013, the decree 1375 and 1376, which excludes some activities um, as activities that, they, that do not constitute access to genetic resources. So these uh, national uh, provisions on, on access and benefit sharing are also framed under the dispositions and under the provisions of the political constitution and uh, the, some laws, for example, the law, uh, the law uh, 99 of 1993 that established, that creates the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, as well as, well as the law 165 that um, is the convention on biological diversity. So when you want to access to genetic resources and its derivatives of Colombia origin, you have to subscribe a contract, which in the terms used in the convention are the conditions for the access to genetic resources or its derivatives and the associated beneficiary. In, uh, and also it acts as the previous informed consent in which mutually agreed terms are established, as it is a contract that which terms are, are, are negotiated between both the user and the provider. In, in this case, the provider of the resource is the government of Colombia and the user could be any one of you. 
So uh, the contract is basically a previous informed consent in which mutually agreed terms are established for the access to genetic resources and the, its associated beneficiary. What activities do require the, the access, the, the contract for access to genetic resources? First, the activities that are done with Colombian native species, this requirement applies only for species that are of Colombian origin. Also, uh, this applies not only for the species that are for, or for specimens that are found inside the national territory, also for specimens that could be found outside that were once obtained from Colombia, for example, a plant or a microorganism that currently is in ex situ uh, conditions, for example, in a, biologic, in, in a biological collection. Even if those species are wild, domesticated, or cultivated, they, it, it, independent of their habits, they currently have it if they are of Colombian origin, they are subject to ABS provision to access and beneficiary provisions. And regarding viruses and microorganisms, these provisions apply for all the virus and microorganisms that are obtained from samples that were obtained from the national territory. This is, this is very important because um, uh, uh, the understanding of samples that were obtained from the national territory apply, applies also, for example, for samples of clinical origin, samples that, that are obtained from, from patients from Colombia. If you isolate microorganisms or, or, or viruses from that samples and you want to do access to genetic resources activities, these provisions on, on ABS applies to them. What activities are the activities that constitute access to genetic resources and its derivatives in Colombia? The first activity is the, the isolation of functional and non-functional DNA or RNA units in all its forms found in nature. The second activity is the isolation of single and, or multiple molecules understood as micro and macro molecules produced by an organism by the metabolism of an organism, which are understood as derivatives or byproducts. And also when a patent is sought for projects or procedures obtained or developed from genetic resources or the byproducts, this is in compliance with the Andean decision 486 of 2000, which is a common regime of in, in intellectual property for also the, the Andean community country. It is worth to mention that when these activities are done with purposes for systematic psychological molecular um, and related activities related to taxonomy, they do not constitute access. Therefore, even if, if within those activities you are doing the isolation of DNA, RNA, or some metabolite, you don't need to sign a contract, but you probably would need other permits that are issued in Colombia, so, such as the collection permit. So we have developed this, this diagram to, to establish where do you when when do you require the, the access the to sign a contract for access to genetic resources when you are trying to to do activities with species of Colombian origin? So the first question that you have to do is what is the origin of the samples? This applies even if the activities are done for research, bioprospecting, or commercial uses. The first the first question is what is the origin of the samples? If they are introduces species or human samples. We are not talking about per samples isolated, isolated from human. We are talking only about samples from human. That means the blood, the genetic resources of humans, not from the microorganisms that are present in those samples. These um, do not require an access uh, contract for access to these genetic resources because those kind of samples are excluded from ABS provisions. But if you are going to work with native species, plants or animals, or, of, or with microorganisms that, they, that were isolated from samples obtained from the national territory, probably you would like, you, you would require a contract for access to its genetic resources. So the, when you set, when you establish the origin of the samples, the second question that you have to do is what is the purpose of these activities? If you are going to do basic research without commercial purposes, for example, molecular systematics, molecular ecology, evolution, or biogeography, you do not require a contract for access to genetic resources. You can do isolation of DNA or 
metabolites for exclusively those purposes without having a contract, but having the required permits for obtaining the samples. But otherwise, if you are going to do bioprospecting activities or commercial or industrial activities, you have to do to yourself the, the next question, which is, are any of these activities on, undertaking? And we are referring to the three activities that I mentioned before, that are the isolation of DNA and RNA, the isolation of single or multiple molecules produced by the metabolism of an organism, or if you are going to seek for a patent about products or procedures obtained or developed from genetic resources or its derivatives. If you are going to do any of these three activities, you have to sign a contract for access to genetic resources with this ministry. But if you don't, you don't have to, to sign the said contract. When we talk about patents, uh, I want to highlight that uh, given the provisions of the Andean um, regime on intellectual property, the decision 486 of 2000, even if you are going to work with crude extracts, that means when we are talking about fruit extracts, we are talking about samples of an organism that probably do not have molecules isolated, probably an alcoholic extract or, 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 or not only the maceration of a sample. But even if you are going to seek for a patent with those kind of, of samples, you need to sign a contract. And that is because the Andean decision 396 defines derivative or includes the definition of crude extracts in the definition of derivatives. Therefore, for the compliance of both decisions, the Andean decision 396 and 391 and the Andean decision 486, you have to sign a contract if you are seeking a patent for crude, for that, that is obtained or developed from crude extracts. So with these generalities, I will like to I would like to mention that we have developed a completely handbook for access to genetic resources and, and the byproducts in Colombia that is completely in English, in wow. which you could find all the provisions and access to genetic resources of Colombia, as well as a do list in, in file form for access to genetic resources and all the steps that you need to, to take to, to sign and to obtain a, a, a the contract for, for access to, to, to genetic resources and this handbook could be obtained in the link that I provide in my slides. Uh, with this, I end my presentation saying to you that all uh, the requests for access to genetic resources must be done to this email address. So thank you very much and we look forward for your questions. Esteban, thank you very much. This is a complicated topic, even if we are uh, from Colombia. So this handbook uh, is going to be uh, a good, a good, I don't know what is the word to say, herramienta? A good tool. A good tool for, for everyone. So thank you very much. What about if, uh, if Esteban, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm hearing you. Ah, okay. So what about if, I don't know, I am working and living in France and I need, I don't know, maybe an advisor who could give me an, an advice in this topic. Is there a, any advisor in this group that I can, uh, that I can call or to be in touch? Of course, you can also request to the emails that I provide. Uh, the, you can request meetings with us. We are, we are always open and willing to cooperate with our users because we understand that sometimes this topic could be difficult for someone. So yes. we are always open to talk directly with our users. We are constantly interacting with them. We are in a position to do it in English or in Spanish, whatever you prefer. And we could, um, are more than happy to guide you through the process and to establish if you require the contract. And if you require it, we are also happy to guide you through the process until you sign the contract. 
Okay, Esteban, so thank you very much again. We hope to have such a good news from your work there. So let us know at the end of this important meeting. Thank you very much for you. It's a pleasure for me also to, to, to be able to, to share with you our provisions and, uh, and these thoughts. So we hope okay. that, that you and your, your webinar very well. Okay, Esteban, so have a nice, I don't know, maybe evening. <laughs> if we are at the afternoon, here okay, is so, 4 p.m. <laughs> so have a nice afternoon. So at this moment, we are going to open the, the Q&A session. I mean, question and answer. I don't know if someone, if someone has any question, I'm going to, to check the, the chat. Um, okay, so no, there is a comment, but there is anything else. Giovanni and the other uh, speakers, I don't know if you want to 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 say something be, before Katia Mendes from Boyan Topic uh, share with us some words. So Giovanni, I don't know if the speaker say something in the chat on the chat. Let me check one minute the, the chat. Okay. Okay, no. Okay, so nobody wants to talk now. So Katia Mendes, uh, she is the strategic intelligence coordinator of Bioentropic. Uh, Katia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> What do you think about the topics and the opportunities in Colombia that we share today? Uh, first, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it has been an interesting time uh, where we have learned about business, op the opportunities and innovation in cosmetics. I think it's a good topic and we can see very important and interesting topics relate with ingredients and cosmetics. Really nice. Okay, do you want to share something else with us? Yes, yes. Uh, in this webinar, we had seen the opportunities in Colombia for the production of cosmetics and new ingredients from Colombian biodiversity. And this has materialized through different innovative projects with Colombian species. Um, we were able to see the great opportunity to do business and bio business in Colombia. And additionally, we have different companies that have developed products and business with cosmetics with natural ingredients, such as Ecoflora Cares with the blue dye, uh, Bio Ingrid with a new generation of ingredients, Kahai with the sustainable Kakai oil, and Green Andina with the biodiverse ingredients for formulation. And finally, um, we listen about key aspects related regulations, national and supranational legislation. This kind of topics are very interesting for us. And this panorama show us that there are great opportunities to innovate in ingredients from for cosmetics from Colombia and the opportunity to generate alliances for new businesses. Um, Biantropic and the companies in this webinar can be great allies to now and work with the Colombian market. Uh, for this reason, this, this webinar are very, is very important for us to, to connect and create opportunities and new projects uh, since Colombia to the world. Thank you. Thank you, Katia. Thank you very much. So thank you all of you. It has been a pleasure to have you here. And it had been a pleasure to have you here. Remember that this webinar was organized by Global Cosmetic Clusters and Bioentropic. Uh, we share the email on the chat. Uh, we hope everything is clear for you. Remember that the English is not our language. 
but we enjoy to be here with you and we make an effort, uh, all of us um, made an effort with these languages. We are going to share this uh, webinar recording in the website of the Global Cosmetic Cluster and we are going maybe to talk about the possibility of send, of send this recording to you emails because you spend your time here and you deserve it. Okay, next one in the act, in the program activities of Global Cosmetic Cluster. Giovanni, could you change the slide, please? Okay, save this next date, okay? July, new materials development in Taiwan. September, supply chain and sustainability. November, packaging industry. I hope you can understand these names i mean from my accent but you can see it in the on the screen so thank you very much have a nice day have a nice afternoon have a nice night remember we are the team of bioentropic bioentropic.com and we are part of the global cosmetic clusters so thank you very much and goodbye